Speaking of weird places to get rubbed, do you want to talk about what you did last week? Last week. Yep, let's go home. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. What? Why? What was that? Happy birthday, yeah. dear Lauren. You're old. But not washed up. Yay! That was like Tiggo. blue balling people. Happy of... birthday to you. Okay, I don't you know go. about the last part. You go. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. So it's not actually my birthday today. This will be the birthday episode that's coming out around my birthday. Around? Around my birthday. Okay. My birthday's actually on a Friday. It's birthday adjacent. And so it's birthday adjacent. But I do have my birthday bull terrier sweater on, which can be worn now. I now have a birthday bull sweater, bull terrier sweater on as well. That's perfect. It can be worn three times a year. It can be worn on my birthday, Diggy's birthday, and Moose's birthday. That's so nice. Yeah. And if you want to have a crop top, it could be worn on your birthday as well, four times a year. I feel like it's going to be a three thing. It's a three timer. I think it can be a three timer. Yeah. Not everything needs to be um, dual purpose. I know that all my hoodies are your hoodies and not your hoodies are mine, yes. but this should apply in the same way. This should apply in the same way. So, yeah, same logic. So, right. So, this is our hoodie. This is your hoodie. I don't need to wear a midriff. I don't know. I think that people might be into it. If I get to wear this hoodie, I get to wear all your hoodies. Although, yeah. I, your hoodies, are, they don't fit me. What do you mean? You get like larges. They're all XL. <laughs> no, I know, but they're like XL to fit you. Okay. Yeah. I also, I also, when I get an XL, I also am like, I'm down to shrink it a little bit in the wash. No. So, I'm, so, I'm a little rogue with it in the dryer. And really, and how do you treat the rest of your laundry? Little little rogue, little rogue. <laughs> Except for that's not true. My Elfly workout shorts and my Lululemon pants, I treat with care. Handle with care, just like Diggo. Handle with care. Let's pop this bubbly. It is ten o'clock. We are wild past nine tonight, and this bubbly has been sitting in front of me for two hours while we adjusted the lighting, and I am ready to a drink. Producer it's Shoshana. Actually, what? Sorry, go ahead. Producer Shoshana brought you a, a very special. My two favorite things in the entire world. This is the TikTok that I made of girl dinner. Crumble Which, cookies. I, I'm seeing a few things in this room that could be your favorite. My four plus uh, uh, another Bull Terrier favorite thing. But this is my girl dinner. Girl dinner. Is sparkling wine or champagne of any kind and crumble cookies. Pour it up. <gasps> I would do it, but I have a diggo. That's okay. Yeah, and, yeah. And as everyone knows at home, when one of us has a dog on each other, the other person has to get whatever that other person needs. That's fully Whether the it's role. a snack. Yeah. Like if, if you could go to the bathroom for me, I I'd ask you to, to do that. that. Yeah. Yeah. And you would have to. Go ahead. And that's the rule. Old. Old. To your 30s. I can't believe it. That's delicious. Wow, that's delicious. Show, what are we drinking? It's a sparkling Alvarino. Wow. That's cold. That is delicious. Jeremy was looking at the back of my head the other day when we were sitting in the living room and he found more gray hairs. (laughs) I know we talked about this a couple episodes ago, but. I mean, I feel like this is like, it's it's like, this is the this episode. Is actually the first great that you found the other day? Was that like the very first in your head? I think I had, I think, again, I think we had this conversation, but I think I had one rogue gray at one point, but it was, it was a lone soldier. Like there okay. were no comrades around. Got it. And now it's a, <laughs> and a now small it's like, troop? Yeah. Now there's like a troop and I'm concerned. I have a hair appointment coming up. Um, what? Oh my God. I'm so excited. Well, when did, do you know when your mom started getting gray hairs? No, I actually don't know. Um, probably because she hasn't started. I need to share something that I'm so excited about that Jeremy shared zero excitement in, um, okay. because I just feel like the other women, I, I'm actually surprised that you wouldn't like this because I just feel like people that have hair would be excited. If you have a head, I would just think that you'd be excited about it. I'm going to a head spa, a Korean head spa in a couple oh, of weeks. Oh yeah. Now I'm out. And I'm specifically getting my extensions taken out for a full week so I can go do this with Mia and Tracy. So my hair will be violently thin and I will be depressed for the solid you week. You always say that, but you come home, you look similar. You haven't seen my head without extensions in years. Yes, I have. When? It wasn't that long ago. During COVID, you yeah. took them out for a while. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. But anyways, now they're coming out for a week, going to a head spa. I have a 90 minute head spa booked. And they do the whole scalp massage. They do like a three time shampoo. They use like infrared on your scalp. And I don't even care if it's just, if it's just like- Floofy bullshit. Floofy bullshit. It's gonna feel so good. Also like even just having my scalp washed properly when my extensions are out for like that one day before they re-sew them back in is like the best 
45 seconds of my life. And so to have 90 minutes of this, they do facial facial massage. They do a little gua sha. A little gua sha? Yeah, they open up all your You should call Michael Blaustein. He wants to go with you. Oh, that's right. Michael Blaustein was really into the he gua sha. He was big on the gua sha, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, was that Trevor? No, it was, it was Blaustein for sure. Maybe. Yeah. Um, no, Trevor was on the feet side. No, no, no. Michael's feet. Fuck, maybe it wasn't the Michael's way around. Michael's feet, because Trevor was like, I'm going to name my firstborn kid Gua Sha. Can we get a clip? <laughs> <laughs> and so we are driving over an hour to go to the OC to go to this place, because there's there's a few places. It's like getting more popular. Um, I think it like blew up on TikTok. And uh, they there's a there's specific place in the OC where they've got, I think, like 12 beds so we can all go at the same time and have beds? our thing done. Yeah. Oh, they give you little warm booties, a blanket. They tuck you in. They read you a bedtime story and give you a snack. They don't give you a snack. But Speaking of weird places to get rubbed, do you want to talk about what you did last week? Last week? Your little foot massage? Oh, my God. I mean, oh, I guess I shouldn't name it. It's got it's got um a kind of a questionable name where you're like, ooh, is this a if, rub and tug place? I just think that if I walked in there towards the end of the day, closing time, yeah. I would have been led to a different area. Yeah. Obligatory. I don't know. You know what? I, I just feel like I, because I know a handful of guys who have gotten rubbed and tugged, I'm like, I know that this does exist. And it's not just, it's not just like a fairy tale thing. You know what I mean? Or a nightmare were thing you, or whatever you want to have, whatever you want to call it. Were you under the impression that it was a, not a real thing? Well, I just, I feel like there's just less girls that it happens to maybe. Well, they get rub and tugged. They get rub and tugged. Where are we going with this? I don't, uh, know. I don't think that it's necessarily targeting uh, the same demographic. Yeah. Put it that way. Yeah. But no, there's a lot of dudes. In fact, a lot of dudes get obsessed with it. I'm so glad this is my birthday episode that we're talking about rub and tug massages. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. I went for a 45 minute foot massage the other day and it was so wonderful. It was so wonderful. I ran a couple miles the other day, which I just don't do. I fucking hate running. I hate cardio in all forms and I just don't do it. I think I ran in a pair of new shoes that were like really not supportive. And so I have had really sore calves and feet for the last week. And Jeremy doesn't do the whole massage your fiance thing. And so I was like, yes, I will. <laughs> I'm gonna call you out. I'm gonna call you out for it. <laughs> how, how did this become an attack, an attack on me? I thought you were telling a story. And so I was like, I'm gonna go find a place. And for $40, a 60 minute massage. I gotta be honest. I'm not doing that for 40 bucks. Yeah, I know. That's why I went down the street and got it, it, got it done for $40. I don't know what rate I'd be interested in, but I'm not, I'm just not doing it. And I love your feet. I have good uh, feet. You have great feet. Yeah, they're cute. <laughs> cute the wiki feet. Anyways, I'm looking forward to my head spa and I'm going to be 30 by the time this episode comes out. Are you and going I'm alone? sure. No, I'm going with me and Tracy. I told you that already. Okay, fun. Yeah. Got it. I'm so excited. We're going to go and maybe go buy some kawaii plushies and maybe go to get some Asian food. Lawrence and... decided that because I have filled our house with tech that she can fill our house with squishmallows. And I will continue to do that. I bought myself a capybara plushie the other day. Who named it? And Jeremy did. Have we shared? I thought we have. I have the innate ability to <laughs> name Lauren's capybara. I, well, I should say, I have the innate ability to come up with names for her stuffed animals, despite not really liking them. But then because I gave them the name and I think it's kind of cute, I have a soft spot for them. And I think exactly. this has just been a giant strategy of yours since the beginning. For sure. If I get you involved on yeah. the journey, then you're invested. You've been using the tips that I've been giving, yeah. haven't you? And no, yeah. for sure. I for sure salespersoned you into this. Fuck. Yeah. How do I get out of this? Oh, I don't want to buy anymore. It's too late now. I'm selling. It's too late now. Whatever. So sorry. So you got a capybara. And I, I will say my entire feed for whatever <laughs> it's reason, capybaras. it's just capybaras. And I know why, because every time I see a new one, I share it with you. Mm -hmm. So it's like Instagram and TikTok knows show capybara will, will engage. Wait, right, right, right. We'll share. Like they think that I'm in like part of like a, a, a low key Facebook moms capybara that love capybara. Cult. Yeah. Is it legal to have a capybara or can capybaras be in America? Uh, Kyber bears can be in America, but it is not legal to own them as a pet, I'm pretty sure. Well, can you own a pet rat? Yes. What's the difference? Okay, well, <laughs> capybaras are quite large. Right, but they, they're, they're both rodents. Yeah, but I think a capybara has just like different needs. <laughs> Talk me about it. Let's, like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, let me if see. You want to is it legal to? Mean, if you want to pull your poster bear? board and talk about your third grade <laughs> science <laughs> project, I, I mean, there was no world when I was in grade three doing that science project and that Bristol board presentation that I thought that I was going to be living in LA, considering 
owning. We right. also have two capybaras in our house no, now. No, Diggy is for sure. Every time I see a capybara being like weird and, and just like existing, I think to myself, that's Diggy. That's that, yeah, exactly. Uh, no, it is not legal for Californians to own capybaras. The rodent is an invasive species. That's fucking rude. <laughs> that is so rude in the state. Invasive. Why are they banned as pets? They capybaras would be very capable of establishing a breeding population when some few of them inevitably escaped or were released. Oh, they're quite large and as an invasive species would disrupt the local environment and would probably be difficult to eradicate or control. You get a capybara, you get a capybara. <laughs> and you get a capybara. They're fucking huge. I'm always shocked when I see it, just how big they are. Yeah, they're huge. They're huge. Like they're, they're bigger giant. than Diggy and most. Oh, 100%, yeah. they're the biggest rodent. How big are they? How, how like, much do they weigh? This is, this is more the speed of what I wanted my birthday episode to be. Okay, got it. <laughs> how much does a capybara weigh? Okay, Cap what's, what's your guess? They, uh, Holy shit. 65. 77 to 150 pounds. I don't know if I want a 150 pound rodent. We, oh no, you know, we have been meaning to follow up on, on the last like month of episodes that I've gotten so many comments and DMs about. People want to know how your man friend date went. Uh, we never followed up about that. And people were invested. Guys, it went really great. Jerry made a friend. We're going to hang out again and I wasn't gonna say this, but I'm feeling pretty good right now and I'm feeling great about the episode. So his name is also Jeremy. It's so crazy. They so, also look really similar. He's my height. It's not taller. Yeah. Oh, really? He's tall. Yeah. Tall. Uh, Diggo. Oh, Diggo. We went really well. Um, we're, we've got activities planned. That is so nice. We, yeah, I mean, we're in a distance relationship right now. So yeah, like, yeah. you know, that, that comes with its challenges. Jeremy's but. local friends are punching the air right now. I don't have any, <laughs> I'm doing my best to get rid of them. They just keep texting. Uh, I just, uh, I get so, um, you know what's great about having a friend that you have, you can have new conversations with, yeah. that like everything's new, but also because they don't live right next door, that's not like the way like you're gonna like ask me to go hang out right now right. when I got something to do. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot easier to plan three weeks in advance a time to be free and to want to do that thing mm -hmm. and then follow through that, that thing versus having to balance the, oh, I could do that, but then these 19 things won't get done. No. You are actually more of a planner than a spontaneous hangout kind of friend. Which is the exact opposite of the person I used to be. Yeah, yeah, actually now I'm, I'm literally, I was flipping back and forth on that, but I was like, no wait, that's what you used to be like. But now you're, you're much more like, you're a little, you're a little grouchy towards spontaneous plans, I'd say. I'm just <laughs> not, You're just 31. I'm just, yeah. You're just 31. I'm slow to excite. <laughs> And I gotta be honest, for the most Wait, part- are you becoming a crotchety old man? Yes. I know. Yes. Watch can happen in real time. I just don't enjoy- <laughs> Anything. LA is not a convenient city no. to have fun in. You have to play the game, have to be okay with that game, mm -hmm. have to like, mm -hmm. the, the, the people and the things that I have to do to avoid the, the ridiculous delays. I know this is like a, a place of privilege because other, you know, younger me would have been just like, I'm excited to be here. Yeah. But like now I feel like the older you get, the more you invest or the more you're interested in uh, making your space comfortable and enjoyable and exactly 100%. how you want it. And so I used to live in a shoe box <laughs> with no air conditioning a long time ago. I never, I never even thought about that, how you would probably make active plans to be at home as little as possible. Right. Yeah, I never even thought about that. Like it, the, the house was the, okay, go recharge yeah. for four to eight hours most nights of the week mm -hmm. and be out, have fun. Oh my God, I have always made, even when I lived in like really small apartments, I've always invested so much time and energy into making my like home space, even if it's small and shitty, like when I was in university and had cockroaches, you know, I made the decor nice for myself and the cockroaches because- did you have cockroaches once or twice? Um, I would say one and a half times. Okay. One and a half times. My roommate and I, in my third year of university, we left for the summer, both went, left Toronto and went back to our hometowns to like go work our summer jobs or whatever. When we came back, we opened up one of the drawers that held like the saran wrap and the plastic baggies and I forget what the specific kind of cockroaches are because the ones in New York and in LA are large. They're like like an inch or two long. And those ones can be a one-off and you can find one of those and just be like, oh shit, that's a big cockroach. They, they hang alone? They hang alone. Yeah, yeah. they're they're lone soldiers. Canadian like, like that cockroaches. first gray hair that I had. And well, 
No, Diggy, where Diggo. you go? Diggy. Diggy. Yeah. Oh, you stole my Diggy. Diggo. He? I don't think I stole him. He just chose which parent he wanted to be with. And then we came back, and I'm not kidding, when we opened up this drawer, it was teeming. It was teeming. I never even heard you use that word. Oh my God, I only reserve that word for specific use when referring to the specific cupboard that we opened. Oh my God, it was awful. And these ones breed like crazy. They just be fucking and making babies. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. We literally were using duct tape along all of the door frames to try and make little sticky barriers so that they would get stuck on them as they were walking through our whole apartment. We were sleeping with the lights on because oh cockroaches, boy. they, you would literally, oh my God, it was awful. They like, they they thrive in the dark. So we would come home or whatever from a night out and we would turn the lights on and they would all go scattering. Oh my it God. It was awful. It was awful. And and how long was this experience? We probably dealt with this for like a month. And so obviously like you have building management. This was like a really, really large building. And it was, it was a really shitty building in like kind of like a rough area. And they were like, okay, yeah, yeah. Like we'll like fumigate your apartment. So we moved out for, I think it was like, I don't know, maybe a week or something where they gas your whole apartment yeah. or whatever. So and guys, you, like, did everybody have to move out or just you guys? Okay, so here's the thing is that like, they're like, oh, we'll do your unit, but that just makes them leave your unit. And obviously they fucking come back. Right. So like the unit, they would never, the building was like so shitty that they would never have everyone leave to do the proper maintenance right. and do the whole building. They're just moving from one side to the next. They're just moving the roaches from different apartment to apartment. And so obviously they were back and we ended up having to move out. It was awful. They let us break our lease because it was so bad. She, my roommate literally woke up with a roach like on, like roaches on her body. And that was the end of it for us. So like, we couldn't do it. We no. couldn't do it. We were just like, weren't sleeping. I would have dropped out of school right then. We had to keep all of our food in, um, we got like big uh, Tupperware uh, bins. Butterware? We, what? Tupperware? Tupperware? <laughs> yeah. We had to keep, and we kept all of like our dry food in the pantry in Tupperware bins. So if you wanted to like make pasta and you had to like go get your sauce and fucking open the bins up and everything had to be so airtight sealed. It was awful. Can you imagine like bringing a guy home and be like, oh, by the way, we have roaches. We have roaches. Yeah. So just get excited for this threesome. Like if, if I <laughs> oh, I want to vomit. Okay, next. <laughs> All right, Lauren, put a finger down if you've done any of the following. Oh, no. One, consider every TikTok health guru your personal wellness okay. Sherpa. Two, start taking the newest vital supplements, even if some uh. taste like they should have stayed in the lab. Uh. Three, have tried your friends, any carb as long as it's organic and maybe purple diet. But it's purple. And lastly, you follow that one influencer's nine-step skincare routine plus an eight-step... <laughs> Plus an eight step <laughs> hair grooming routine every night religiously. I, what, which, which uh, is it? I, I, I plead the, the, f the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. Which one is it where I don't have to answer the question? Uh, for you, any of the above. The fifth? Is yeah. it the fifth? Yeah, I, I plead, I play the fifth. Okay. Well, I'm positive you're not alone. But when's the last time you sat with a real diploma on the wall doctor? If you're scrolling your calendar, it might be time for ZocDoc. All the expertise, none of the fads. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. How much does it cost? Free. F-R-E-E. -E. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top rated patient reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance, are located near you and treat almost any condition you're searching for. These docs all have verified reviews from actual real patients, not bots. This makes such a huge difference for me personally. I never go to a restaurant without checking the reviews first. So when I think about it, why would I not do the same with my doctor? It's already such an anxiety inducing experience getting myself to go to the doctor in the first place. But now with ZocDoc, I can trust I will be put in the right hands. Trans Transitioning from one insurance plan to the next a couple months ago would have been a lot more difficult without ZocDoc. Truly. The average wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between just 24 and 48 hours. That's it. You can even score a same day appointment. Once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately with just a few app taps. No more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. Go to ZocDoc.com slash wild and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C doc.com slash wild zoc doc.com slash wild zocdoc.com slash wild this show is sponsored by better help there are times in life when we face hard decisions and it can be difficult to know the right path forward this could be about a work-related choice dealing with people in our lives 
or other important issues. During these times, therapy can be a big help. It can give us focus and remind us of our real goals as we journey through life. Throughout my early 20s and even today, confusion. Late and 20s. A, yeah, stop. Late 20s. I have another week and a half, okay? Yeah. A week and a half, stop. Throughout, you mean throughout, <laughs> throughout. The, throughout the entirety of my 20s. <laughs> Confusion and anxiety about my career path have sent me into multiple spirals. Oh, your first on a upcoming thirty-year-old spirals coming. No, no, oh, no. Thank God no, for better health. No, we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait until Q one for a thirty-year-old spiral. She'll call you in a month. <laughs> it's an extremely unmotivating and lonely feeling to be constantly worried about what the right move is for my future. Therapy has helped me stop future spirals and learn to trust my gut when it comes to making big life decisions. I do think sometimes you need to spiral though. A healthy spiral is a good spiral. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe let's maybe not give advice. Without better help, without better help, I don't think that I could take on these spirals by myself, especially on my quarterly basis. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more practice you get, the easier it gets. If you're contemplating beginning therapy, consider trying BetterHelp. It's a completely online platform designed for convenience and adaptability, and it can fit around your schedule. Simply complete a short survey to be paired with a licensed therapist, and you can change therapists at any time at no extra cost. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash WT9 today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash WT9. This is exactly what I wanted my 30th birthday episode to be like. I love it. Are you scared? <laughs> of what? 30? No. Are you excited? <sighs> Again, I, I think we talked about this recently. Like I just feel like the only thing about getting older that stresses me out is like the reproductive side of things. Like I, I feel great. I feel like I'm the strongest I've ever been. I feel like career wise, I'm in a good place. I'm actively not in a spiral. I'm actually doing, I feel like really inspired and love the content that I'm making right now. And like we're engaged, we're planning a wedding. We've got two great copy bearers in the house. The podcast is thriving. <laughs> Don't tell the state of crumble in front of us. We do. Like everything is going so, so well. The only thing that makes me stressed about getting older is the reproductive side of things. And I've actually got a friend who's freezing her eggs right now and she's on her third day of a 10 day cycle of her hormone shots. Mm -hmm. And it's like going okay for her so far, but it's not an easy process. No. My mom was sort of like, well, why doesn't she just have kids? Like, why, why, why wouldn't they just have kids right now? I'm like, what do you mean? Freezing your eggs is not the same as just like having kids. I those some, processes are- Some might say it's the uh, the opposite of it. It was wild. I was like, what could you possibly mean? My mom thinks genuinely that our routines, our life wouldn't change that much if we had a kid. Isn't that interesting? I think that, uh, I just, I don't think that either of us uh -huh. have, because we have the choice to be a little bit more strategic about this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't think it's the best time for us to be new parents. Not at all. Not at all. Yeah, I'm not, not saying that we couldn't all. figure it out. I'm not saying we couldn't do it. I'm, it's just not the best time for either of us to be, and there's never gonna be a great time. There's never the right time, mm -hmm. or, I understand that. Mm -hmm. But I don't have a burning desire within me. Not at all right In now. nine months no. to have to be able to commit and prioritize mm -hmm. a little crying, kicking fucker. A third capybara. That's half me looking back at oh, me with just eyes scary. of sarcasm. <laughs> Just like, he's just like, look, I'm changing his diaper. He's peeing on me. And he's or she's selling, peeing, he's or she's peeing on me. selling you something. And she's looking at me going, yeah. and they're looking at me with this look of like, uh -huh. I, this is the best you can do. My mom was like, the poop doesn't even smell bad when you're breastfeeding. The poop doesn't even smell bad. It doesn't even, it doesn't, the poop doesn't even smell bad until like, you start eating real food. It didn't, that wasn't, and I, was I wasn't like, even that concerned. That doesn't actually quite sell me on wanting to have a baby because that's a lifelong commitment. It's not just like the newborn poop that I'm thinking about. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's bigger than that. And these are probably the things that people need to think about more before rushing into having kids. <laughs> yeah, I just, I mean, it is kind of, Interesting to think about the fact that it probably wouldn't be more than four or five years, which is still crazy to me. Totally. Do we, when, when do we want kids? I, I, I feel like it's hard to put an age on it, but like, I don't know. I just feel like n not right now. Yeah. Is the answer. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I'm still very interested in having a kid. Yes. It, me too. Me too. And someone commented, what did they, what did they say? I, I reposted it. They, someone replied to some, a piece of content that I posted that was totally, completely unrelated to like nowhere in the stratosphere 
of of the kid topic. And they were like, when the fuck are you having kids? And I was like, I'm sorry, what? Like, that's the other thing that I, I think that I am annoyed by just in association with getting older is that people, the expectations that people have of you. And I'm sure that, you know, couples who are together for years and years and years and who are like not married yet, I'm sure they hear the same repetitive shit or, over or and over and over married? Again. When are you getting married? 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 Now I feel like as we like progress through and like, you know, hypothetically like check off the boxes. They're like, okay, well like the next box for you is to like have a kid. So when are you having kids? What are you having kids? What are you having kids? And it's just like, that's just not, we, we have other things on our checklist right now. I will say though, it probably, I, at least when it comes to people that have already had kids, mm -hmm. I would like to think in a positive sense that because they uh, view having kids as one of the best things that they ever did. Totally. That they're interested in that for us. That's the best possible way that I can like look at that. They are like, oh, they, they want us yeah. to f experience like, the happiness that they feel. Right. It's like, you know, no, it's a, I like, yeah. I, I know that we're going to love it so much when it's are right. I, I think so. Because think, like, think about how much joy we get from like Moose and Diggy when they do like silly things or like dumb things or like, you know what I mean? Like sharing the love for even just two capybaras, two dogs, whatever. What do you mean dumb things? Like... For example, when we thought Moose was gonna throw up last night and I get the trash can ready to hold his ears back and let him throw up in the trash can because I just know, I know exactly. I know- a basset hound. <laughs> <laughs> I just know his his body movements when he's about to what? yak. And I saw that he was eating leaves earlier in the day and I was like, I know it's coming, I know it's coming. But anyways, you know what I mean? Like we, we love the routines of the dogs and like the mannerisms and the humorisms that they've, that we know them for and their habits and stuff. So like, I know that we're gonna have so much fun. And like, think about, remember when Diggy's jammy era? Oh, Baby love gets to jammy actually era. actually wear jammies every single night. Like that's True. so fun. True. The little outfits, little sneakers yeah. that little babies get to wear are so cute. I mean, we were talking about this the other day um, with our, our friends of like, they, cause they were, they were asking us if we wanted a boy or a girl. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like we're, I, for whatever reason we lean boy, but yeah, also like- I don't know why. I don't know I, what, for whatever reason. And I feel like they lean the other way. And I'm just thinking to myself, whatever we lean towards is probably the opposite of what we'll get. But totally. Even, but even totally. beyond that, I just feel like there's never going to be a a, a time where you're going to be ready or know what to do or have a playbook. Yeah. It's all going to be random. Our lives are probably going to be just as chaotic and weird then as they are now. Mm -hmm. We'll just be a little bit older. Yeah, totally. But and still we'll figure it out. the same amount of wrinkles and no gray hairs. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Um, And we can thank our doc doctors for that. Yeah, our doctors for that. <laughs> yeah, no, just, I, yeah it, there's, there's no interest in it right now. Check back in five years. Check back in but five years. But also don't. We'll let you know. I know, I know, I know. I do feel bad for women that get that question because it's not like, if anybody asked me that question, yeah. if my, like, my immediate response is like, I don't know, whatever. I feel- People just accept that. I think uh, the one great thing about social media, like obviously social media has uh, many, many downfalls, um, but although it does employ me, so it, you know, love it. Uh, owe my life to it. Um, one of the great things about social media, I think is also seeing parents um, be one, realistic about what parenting is like, but also two, seeing women have kids much later and understanding that it's not just like a myth that oh, all of your yeah. eggs die the day you turn 30. Yeah. Like I was just reading an article about how like Kourtney Kardashian is pregnant currently and she's like 45 or 44 or something right now. And one of our good friends, same thing. She's 40 and her and her wife just got pregnant. Obviously they had to use a little bit of science in there as well too, a little turkey baster situation. We use science too. I mean, we can, we can maybe use science as well too, yeah. but like we just, there's more options now. And I think that you're not on, oh my God, Dickie just shed so much fur. I'm good on kids. I'm covered by the way. Yeah, you are wearing, you are truly wearing a Dickie sweater right now. That is so nice for you. I love that. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, not everyone's timeline needs to be the exact like the same. Yeah, period. totally. I think also too, depending on like what city you live in, like I'm sure if I had stayed in St. Catharines, my hometown, I maybe would have had kids earlier because like, yeah. I just feel like, I don't know, I don't know. Also the cost of living is just different too. That's like, true. I think we have the privilege of at least right now being a little bit out in front of where we would like need need to be for, to be comfortable by the time the kid comes around. For I mean, sure. I feel like we're trying to get a little bit more comfortable yeah. to then be able to not hopefully mm -hmm. have to work the same amount of hours for the first year or two when they get here. That's totally part of it as well too. Like yeah. I would love to be, and like, do I really wanna be a mommy vlogger? Like, I mean, ask me in five years, but 
probably odds are probably maybe uh, like you would want the option to be able to create content. You don't even need document. No, and more importantly, you want the option not to. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you want the option. It's like, you want to have the, be, have the luxury to be able to not have to depend on that. Yeah. Oh, have you ever seen that clip? It's awful. It's like the, I mean, and, and I could talk about this for Which hours clip? about the family vlogger who was making her, she somehow left the clip in the vlog of her making her son do crying faces after, after their dog had literally just been put down or just, <laughs> <sorry to> go. <laughs> yeah, to go. But she she left the clip in the vlog somehow. I'm sure they edited it because it, it like it was just so careless. And it's her making her son, giving her son like prompts to be like, look sad, look sad. No, try and cry, try and cry. And it's so. I hope it's their, I hope it's their editor going. No, no, no. I'm getting a new job. Send, 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 post it. It's just so fucking awful. And like the whole, I don't know. I just think that there's, there's, there's a lot of wrong ways to do family vlogging and it's very difficult. And I, I never want to be like, oh, this is my livelihood. And so I need to have a baby now and I need to be a family vlogger to keep the checks coming. Yeah. But even then there's a big, big jump between that and Hey, like roping the kid in. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, I think someone like Aspen does a great job. Like Aspen Ovard, who I think you've met before. Nope. You haven't met Aspen? I don't think so. Aspen has two kids and she's still she do, able- Did she do music? What? Did she do music? No, but See, she was a nice style girly pop. She went, she was at the Big Bear trip, the Big Bear trip. Haven't been on a Big Bear trip. Yeah, not invited to the Big Bear trip. I'm trips. not invited to your uh, birthday trip either. Yeah, Jeremy's not invited to the Palm Springs trip. Rude. It's a girly's trip. Fine. So sorry. I'll be holding on the fort with the boys. Fine. Yeah, I know, you're gonna be great. It's gonna be so great. Palm Springs is supposed to be 110 degrees next week, this, this coming week in a couple fun. days when I'm headed there and it is going to be so hot and I hope that I come back a nice toasty and- Crispy marshmallow. Healthy SPF toasty tan marshmallow. Okay, good. That's my goal. Uh, so yeah, um, kids are on the way this time 2031. 2031, what year is it now? You'll be like 40 then. That's, that math doesn't quite add up. It's not as far away but... as you'd like to think. I can't believe you're going to be 30. I know. I don't feel 30 though. You know what I mean? Like, But that's the thing. You never feel. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you do eventually, but like, I, I don't feel like. 31? I, I don't feel like I'm entering my mid thirties. You're not entering your mid thirties. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm entering 32, 30. Yeah. Like to me, the thought of 31, 10 years ago. Yeah. It's not that it was like ancient, but it just felt so foreign. Yeah. And now it doesn't feel all that different. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Despite the fact that I could tell you I'm, I, I feel very differently about my life and things mm -hmm. and like what's important to me and priorities. Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. just not all that um, polarized by the age component. It's because you don't have a uterus. Right, no, I, but I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. <sighs> Fucking uterus. Like, I, I, there is literally no rush for me as an individual yeah. to do fucking anything. I know. That's so crazy. And I, that is a wonderful piece of privilege. What is that like? It, this you is know, why your sleep score is so much higher than mine every night on our aura rings. I, I fall asleep and immediately just start deep, deep sleeping. sleeping. Just log in deep sleep. I just start, my brain is just yeah. defragmenting. Yeah. For the kids that were born in the 2000s, defragmenting was, anyway, keep going. <laughs> um, we also did our wedding menu taste testing. You we guys did. loved that episode. It was fun. It was so much fun. I mean, we also had a great group of people yeah. and the chef yep. and the guy that owned the company yep. and the plan. It was just like a very good vibe. Yep, we had Mia, we had Remy, we had us two and our planner and uh, the coordinator and also the co-founder. Yep. And it was so much fun. The vibes were immaculate. They kept the wine flowing. So it was also a winery. It was hot, but it was beautiful. We were in Malibu. The food was so good. It yeah. was beautifully presented. But also like it's, it's great when you can I appreciate them for creating an atmosphere yeah. where they actually wanted to hear whether we liked something or not. Oh my God, no. I don't think I realized that it was gonna be like that. I thought it was gonna be just like a restaurant oh, type of vibe. Yeah. Like I didn't, I forgot that you've done this before. <laughs> okay. This was so fun. And it was just a good time. And yeah. like, I'm picky, you're picky. Mm -hmm. And had the environment not been like from the beginning, and this wasn't on camera, but the guy was like, Tell me what you don't fucking like. Yeah, he was you, like, we can change literally yeah. anything. He's like, but, if there was a little herb in like a, the, the bread or the bun that you don't like, we can take it out. He's like, anything you yes. want, like we have the ability, it is a custom menu right? and we can do that for you. And we had picked things that were this or that. And so mm -hmm. we had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Like one had to be better than the other one. So it's like, for me, 
being able to comfortably say, I don't like this one. Yeah. And it, great. We're going to do this one. Yeah. Felt good. Yeah. No, no. It was it sounds so, stupid, but like so much fun. It's so, I think it could have been easily one, not fun Two yeah. could have been too stuffy. Mm -hmm. Like that's the issue with like you know, LA and like the cities of just like, everyone just thinks that no, 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 I'm making it. So it's gotta be great. Oh my God. No. Like if you're in an environment where you're scared to like actually share your opinion, that's like terrifying. And I rarely am, but, <laughs> but, like, but even like, even beyond that, like I, I felt like I could have an opinion on things. And when I liked things, they were so good. I was balance it out. Oh my God, no, the food was so good. Literally, I wish that I had asked for a third plate of mac and cheese. We got a second round. And of I wish I hadn't had two cheese. slices of pizza before I left. Yeah, I don't know why you did that, but- um, I don't know why you let me. I thought you were hungry. I was hungry. I don't know, you're a big dude. You can eat a lot. I did. No, yeah, way, yeah, I, yeah. You, you, didn't, you didn't hold back once we got to the tasting. <laughs> you were fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I mean, like it was on crazy portions, but like you, you didn't seem, you know. I'm looking forward to the meal. It's gonna be it's gonna be so good. We also have specifically carved out times, and this is more of a me thing than a you thing, I think, because I am someone who has to eat so frequently, or else I feel like I get lightheaded, like fast metabolism thing. But we've carved out two specific times to have a set, like a like a plate of food set aside so that we can just like scarf it down really quickly and have energy. Cause I feel like that's how bride and grooms get really fucked up by accident. Even if you only have a few drinks, but you've got nothing in your stomach, like that is a recipe for disaster. Yeah. And I also want to be able to enjoy the food. So I want to make sure that we not only do you want to do a sweetheart table? Yeah. 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 I'm done for that. How else would we do it? Well, some people just do like, um, at, like with who, whoever they want to sit with. No, definitely. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Whenever there's the opportunity for me to be at the center of attention. <laughs> no, I just like that. I've only thought about it that way. Yeah, I think also too, I've seen a ton of photos at our venue where they do a sweetheart table. Yeah. And I've, I've also just envisioned it like that. You guys should clarify what a sweetheart table is. Great call. Great call, great call. Sweetheart table is just the- so what, is, what is a sweetheart table? It's just the it's just the uh, couple that's getting married, right? And so bride and bride, groom, groom, bride, groom. And if we were doing like uh, uh, best man and and it, like if we had the, the extended that wedding party, would they still be there? The, or no? no, no, no. That's a, there's a different name for that. I forget what it is. Uh, it is the it's like the head table. Yeah, I think is what it's called. Yeah. Where it's got the whole wedding party that's right. there. I know. I'm so excited to um, make the the tables of who's sitting oh, with I'm who. Not. That's just me. <laughs> Like I think about our 80 year old neighbor, Rona and Bob, who are gonna be invited. And she's so funny. She is like, she is like, oh, uh, she's she's quick and she is hilarious. Feisty. She is a feisty Scottish 80 year old. We can sit her with anybody. She'll keep, she will, oh, she will th that's right. I'm like, I'm like, who am I gonna put Rona next to? Because they are gonna have the best time because she's so funny. Yeah. I think that we should put her with Dan. That'd be great. Our, our our contractor who is also amazing and can talk to literally anyone. He could talk to, I mean, as far as like, you know, drying paint is concerned, yeah, dude yeah. could talk to it. He could talk to it, yeah. 100%. He's just so excited and excitable. Yeah. 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 Um, our save the dates are going out this week. Um, I'm gonna mail them all. I gotta stuff, stuff the little envelopes, very cute. Does anybody else hate licking envelopes as much as you do? Um, so I already dressed this issue and I ordered on Amazon um, wax seal stickers. Wow. Yeah. You little fancy thing you. I know. Cause I actually have a wax seal uh, like kit. And what? <laughs> yeah, I do. You have a wax it's, seal kit? Yeah, I do. What are you from 1813? Uh, what are you, Queen Elizabeth? The, the... I don't know, they're kind of fun. No, it's, it's super fun. Also, this is the era to like, this is the era to like, you know, have fun with it. I know, I, I think I, it's I just, I'm really just not trying to wax seal, pro, like do like the legit one 60 times or however many invites or households we're mailing yeah, um, invite to, that, that's too many. So anyways, I got cute little L stickers for Lewis. And Lauren. And Lauren. Are you excited to be an alliteration? That's so fun. That is pretty fun. That is so fun. I handed you a, a decent deal with that one. And there's a, no, there's a layup into a good, nice little, little a little alliteration situation. I like if if for only the reason that some guys' last names suck, mm -hmm. I totally understand why the hyphen or yeah. just not taking it at all not sometimes at all. is a better option. It's a better option. Yeah. yeah. Oh 
my God, we are sponsored again by Skims and I am losing my mind again. I know that this is coming from Kim herself, obviously. I have been absolutely hooked on their recent Fits Everybody collection. It is absolutely top notch. Think ultra soft, incredibly stretchy and so comfortable, you'd forget you have it on. I might be a little late to the Skims party, but now that I've tried it, there is no going back. Their underwear is a total game changer. Skims is creating the next generation of underwear for everybody. I snagged their dip front thong, boy shorts, and t-shirt bra recently. And for those who have had their share of thongs, you'll get the importance, you'll, you get, you get the importance of quality. With Skims, I genuinely feel empowered, secure in the knowledge that discomfort is not on the agenda. From red carpet events to workouts and even my walks with Moose and Diggy, Skims are my go-to. The Fits Everybody collection of underwear is super lightweight and molds to your body. The buttery soft fabric stretches to twice its size without ever losing shape, meaning you get a perfect fit every time. They're also available in sizes XXS to 4X, which we love to see. Believe the hype, Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. The Fits Everybody collection and more perfect fit essentials are available now at skims.com. Plus get free shipping on orders over $75. After you place your order, be sure to let them know we sent you. Select podcast in the survey and be sure to select our show in the drop-down menu that follows. just had a girl dinner break. Girl dinner. <laughs> girl dinner. Girl dinner. Girl dinner. Girl dinner. <laughs> and by that we mean crumble. So Mia's birthday is actually literally like calendar tomorrow. So we're, really? when we're filming this, yeah, Mia's birthday is tomorrow. And so we, How is she? Is she? She's one year younger than me. So she will be 29. Okay, so you're the only one turning 30. archaic. Yes. 30. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And so. What's 30 in French? Uh, oh my God. Vingt-y or vingt-y, vingt-y, vingt-y. Trant. Oh. Trant. Oh, like Trenton. Trant. I can't wait for all the French speakers to die laughing at that. <laughs> the fact that you did high school in French still just amazes me. I know, it's wild. So anyway. So anyways, uh, I got Crumble delivered tonight because I have to be at the gym tomorrow at 6 a.m. to bring her her birthday Crumble with our gym crew. Oh. Yeah. That sucks. But this is our Crumble because show, producer show brought this Crumble for us. I mean. For the birthday episode. It's about time that cr like Crumble gets delivered here uh -huh. and doesn't get eaten. Like I don't get told, this is not for you. Do not eat this. I usually get you your own crumble, your own singular crumble. You usually do it. It's so yeah, sweet. Yeah, I was going to say, don't, are you kidding? Babe. Are you kidding? If I wasn't already about to marry you, yeah. I would want to marry you. It is so nice. <laughs> it's so nice. Thank you. So anyways, I'm so excited to eat crumble again in exactly seven hours. I, I believe you. I'm so excited. So back to you I'm turning so old. Excited. So back to me doing old, we've put together a little 30 questions to answer about yourself before you turn 30. So and I'm so excited, you can reflect, you can reflect on- Th I, 30 questions I wish I asked myself before I wish you would ask yourself before, okay. yeah, exactly, exactly. Are Here we excited? go. I, I love that you kind of catch up to me almost every year, but not quite. Not quite, I know we're five months apart. A year and five months. No, aren't we only five months apart? Well, I'm 31. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. sorry, a year and five months. You're right. <laughs> Let's go. So close. <laughs> <laughs> what am I looking for in a partner? You know, I, don't, I feel like you could ask that before 40. E, I feel like you need to be asking this before you are trying to meet the right person. <sighs> because like I spent so many years looking for someone that I, cause you know, like people always say like opposites attract. And so for so many years, I thought that I had to be dating someone who was you type You must've e. heard that so many times. I don't know. I don't know where, I don't know where I heard that, but for well, some reason that was, that was it. Look, it just stuck with me for so many years. And so I thought that I had to be dating like a type B chill, chill person. And that Hi. although does have some, you know, some, benefits, it's just not who I'm the most compatible with. So what are you looking for in a partner? I'm looking for a shboob. Okay, and for people that don't know shboob? <laughs> I think the biggest thing I'm looking for in a partner is someone who is compatible with all of the main pillars of like what's important to me. So like value and values and goals and uh, career, motivation, family, friends, social, like how we like to travel, you know what I mean? like. All of those things, like you need to be so aligned on so many of those like core pillars 
And then the rest of it, like you're never gonna be 100% aligned with anybody. I truly, no. truly believe that. And so it's like, it's just finding the person who is aligned with your core values. And then the rest of the little things that like are the more mundane things like you can figure out. Yeah. I also think that there's a level of the things that I think I would have uh, associated with me at a fundamental level at the beginning of a relationship that mm -hmm. I thought were really, really important to me. Yeah. It's not that they're not important to me. I just get the reason that I did those things or the value I was looking for out of those things. I, I'm able to get in a different vehicle almost. Like there's a different path to get there. Like perfect example, like being super spontaneous and just like the way that I was social was unplanned mm -hmm. and not something that go with the flow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like, that's just not you. Mm -hmm. And I would have, I, especially the, the beginning of our relationship, I would have put a lot of that emphasis, as, like as part of who I am, how I, how I enjoy life. Yeah. And it's not that that's not true. I just know that that's not going to be something that you're going to enjoy weekend after weekend. And now it's become really ingrained to me to like, just not seek that and, and find a lot more joy in a lot of other things. Mm. I feel like also too with COVID, how we didn't have the option to literally do anything spontaneous for so long. I feel like it really transitioned you into being <laughs> super comfortable being a homebody. Yeah. <laughs> Is this the person I want to spend the rest of my life with? Once again, I think you can ask this before 40. This motherfucking rock on my finger says yes. <laughs> you know, the, um, what's I've beef for the internet. Sorry. Oh, here we go. Let's go. No. Let's go. I, I understand. <laughs> I understand and I have empathy towards like the, the thought that, you know, when people see a short, that's the only context they get. Sure. But there's something about the level of uh, um, abrasive responses I saw to the short where I was talking about how my Amex let me charge it on one transaction. Oh, for the ring? And I'm like, well, I know I have to pay it back this month. <laughs> oh, people thought that you just were like, like, oh, la, 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 yeah. swipe the card. And like, I don't want to respond to comments being like, yeah, well, I knew that I could afford the like, ring. Like, guys, I can, I can figure it I out. Can, but it was just like, I just didn't think it was gonna all going to go in just that one little transaction without calling Amex ahead of time first. To make that big of a say, transaction. To say, hey, yeah. can I make that big of a transaction mm -hmm, mm -hmm. without any warning on an online store yeah. that I've never transacted with before. Right. So I don't want to explain the the joke because the context was like, you know, kind of there. But mm -hmm. anyway, that was my only issue. Got Sorry. It. I right. didn't, Beef I was, picked. Anyway. Beef picked. Uh, is this the person I was in the rest of my life? Um, it's good for now. We'll see. Once you turn 30, we'll see how I feel. I've never dated a 30 year old before, babe. You've never dated a 31 year old. Yes, you have. You've done it for a half a year now. Oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like trying to math back my other boyfriends and I was like, no, I don't, I don't think that actually maths out. You're going to math back them? Yeah, I was, gonna, I'm, I was math backing. Huh. Mm -hmm. Next question. What will make me happy? This is something you should one be asking. One more capybara, <laughs> one more of crumble and one more bottle of speckling wine. Don't wait till 30 to ask this. Yeah, that's a, that's a good. Uh, but yeah. also don't only do what makes you happy at 19. <laughs> Yeah, so true. And also it's okay if what made you happy at 19 is not what makes you happy at 30. I will say, I think it's like the revisiting. Like revisiting what makes you happy is key. What do you mean? But just going back to my last point there, just like yeah. the things that I, I would have associated and been very, very like, uh, oh, this is who I am. This oh, is yeah. my social. The things that make you happy, sometimes like you have to like revisit it and almost intentionally think through, oh, the things that make me happy have changed. Oh yeah, totally. Also like everyone loves being in a different like era. I'm in an era, I'm in my whatever era right now. I don't know if I've really had any eras until we started dating, but yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyways, like for example, right now, I'm really enjoying, enjoy, enjoying, I'm really enjoying reading right now. And everyone's like, oh, you're in your you're girl reading. era. You're loving reading. And so anyways, like right now, like I really enjoy reading. I, I have a seeking suspicion. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start enjoying Consuming more audiobooks. Soon. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I love it yeah. for you. Yeah. Audiobook era. <laughs> Next. That's how I read hate comments. Nah. That's the voice that I. That's the voice that I read them in. <laughs> and it makes them a little bit less mean. Oh, this is good. Is this the job oh, I want in ten years? In ten years. Ooh, is this the job? Do you think podcasts will still be around in ten years? Do you think it'll be like really different? Well, uh, just off the top of my head, I'm thinking yeah. back to myself. Was the audio business around 10 years ago? Yeah. Was it one of the first mediums that had mass distribution? Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be around in 10 years. 
Wow. But I do think- What in the motherfucker are we gonna be talking about in 10 years from now? I think the difference is, oh, this podcast will not exist in 10 years. <laughs> uh, the uh, Wild Till 9 We're will be We're talking about how, how, how poop doesn't smell yeah, anymore. Yeah, exactly. Once you start eating real food in 10 years. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, it's, just, it's just gonna be nine or till <laughs> nine. No, uh, I think also, do you know anybody? Well, how many of your friends have been at the same job for 10 years? Mm, I would say a lot of my fellow content creators have been making content for 10 years now. Plus, Will they be making content in 10 years? I think a lot of them don't know how to do anything else. Ooh. Not not in not saying that they are Ding. incapable of Ooh. like learning how She's to- She's in her bitchy era. <laughs> <laughs> not saying that a lot of that uh, other uh, like of my you know fellow content creators would be incapable of transitioning into other positions. I'm just saying that I think a lot of them, uh, especially a lot of the creators who have never worked you know a quote unquote real job, real yeah. job and like really been like in the just like the the shit yeah and the luxury and the privilege of like what this job is, I think that there are a lot of creators who will do whatever they can. And it, I totally make sense, you know, to like continue doing what they are doing right now. I mean, I genuinely could not feel stronger about thinking every person should have multiple jobs before mm -hmm. they try and become a lifer or a career of anything. Yeah. Like I think back to, the jobs that I had, the stocking beer in the freezing cold, when, yeah. when it was literally warmer to go to, into the freezer than it was to be outside, to be handed pallets of beer, to then like take them inside and no, stock them in Walmart. No, those are the Walmarts. jobs that fucking humble you. Not even, but like, no, no, like, I thoroughly enjoyed mm -hmm. being at the very bottom of the corporate ladder mm -hmm. on the weekends, working the worst hours because that's what I had time to do. Mm -hmm. And like, that's what gave me a little bit of money to like spend and do little stuff with. Like to me, that was such an edge. Like I learned more doing that than I have in many of the stupid bougie business rooms where right. the deals have been impressive to people that weren't in those rooms, mm -hmm. but like the, the conversations left nothing to be desired. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just healthy to have that contrast. I think it's healthy to be under someone else's whether it be like management or only have, you know, X amount of weeks of vacation where someone else controls your schedule. Like, I think it just helps you realize your privilege when you've worked a handful of those other jobs. There's also a level of like, I think there's a, a, a payoff of seeing what it is that you do get done versus just talking to people all day and watching other people get like, you know, take the last, you know, 90, take the last 10% of every project. It's like when, when you have your job to do and it either gets done because you do it or it doesn't get done because you don't mm -hmm. do it. Like mm -hmm. there's like a level of like satisfaction that I almost miss sometimes. Yeah, I mean, no one's gonna scoop that ice cream except for me. Massive. Worms. No one's gonna serve Popeye. those tables except for me. All right, <laughs> is this the job I want in 10 years? No, um, but I really enjoy this part of the journey. Uh, is this the job that I want in 10 years? I think that I will be doing something similar. Yeah. But I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out. I think that I will be doing something creative and something content related, but we'll see what it looks like. I mean, I even think about like what the social media landscape looked like 10 years ago and it was so different. So we'll see. Yeah. Is this worth it? So I, the way that I read this question is like, is what you're doing currently mm -hmm. and like the, the pros and cons. Yeah. Like, do you feel like the end result is worth the journey to get there? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Oh my God, yeah, are you kidding? I think again, going back to the contrast of like the uh, handful of other jobs that I've worked and like just the, I think having the contrast, like is this worth it? Like I think even in my lowest of lows, speaking specifically to career, it is worth even the worst of the worst days. Yeah. Like I look around at the life that we are able to have and the privilege that we have and I could not be more grateful even on the worst of the days. Yeah, I, I think it's not, only thing I'd add to that is I do think that there's a level of camaraderie that you only get when you're spending more hours of your day away from home than here. Oh my God, these servers that I had just like a, <laughs> like you know, the relation that you build totally yeah. when you're working like a 16 hour shift with someone, like I, I'm sure that people understand that to the deepest yes. yeah, extent. I also am someone who doesn't mind 
most tasks as long as I enjoy the people I'm doing it with. 100%. And I totally am agree. also someone who, if I am in a point or a position of privilege and everything is good and I have to do very little, mm -hmm. but the people around me do not bring me joy yeah. or I don't respect them or I don't feel respected or it's just like a level of I don't feel like I don't feel like I have any like real value to add or there's a, a reason for me to be there because people count on me, mm -hmm. like actually count on me. Mm -hmm. I get very little value and joy out of that. Yeah. Fortunately, I know that it would be difficult for you to turn on everything from the toaster to the TV around here. So <laughs> I do feel like I have a level of value here. There's so much value. You have the so Wi-Fi is not working. <laughs> hey! TSJ! TSJ! <laughs> Next question. Do I miss anyone I have had a falling out with? Ooh, that's interesting. I feel like I'm at peace currently mm -hmm. with the, eh, it goes in ebbs and flows. I feel like I'm at peace right now with how happy I am in the things that I spend the most of my time on, which mm -hmm. is a lot of things that we're doing and building and, and, and prioritizing. Mm -hmm. But I do think that there is a level of, um, I do think that in the future, I'll wish I had found more time for those who right. make me either feel a certain type of way about like, oh, it was fun to like, you know, reminisce with them or the things we could have done had I spent more time with them. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, that's give and take. I am someone who lives life with a lot of empathy. And I typically throughout all my relationships, whether it be friendships or romantic relationships, extend myself way too far when something might be, you know, not serving me in a positive way anymore. And I extend myself too far to the point where I get hurt over and over again. Okay. And then it kind of implodes at the end. And I'm like, well, fuck, I probably should have dealt with this a long time ago when there, when there were other red flags and imminent danger signs flashing all over the place. And maybe because it's, I, because I'm conflict adverse or because I, you know, just don't want to overall rock the boat. I try and fix things on my end as much as possible without disturbing the other person's peace. And I think uh, turning 30 now, I've learned a lot and have learned how to navigate that in a little bit more of a healthier manner. But I, I think that the answer is no. And the, falling outs that I've had have probably been a little bit, maybe even overdue. Well, I think you're like one of your biggest weaknesses yeah. is facing something that you know you need to face. Yeah, totally. Within I'm, your I'm awful at breakups and I'm awful at confrontation where I know that what's best is No, to, I don't think you're bad at breakups. That's the thing. I don't think you're bad at breakups. I think you're bad at the time you know those breakups. I'm bad at, I, I'm, I'm awful at the, I feel, I feel just like awful with the anticipation of the breakup. Yeah. You also are someone who, to your credit, thinks through things before you Too start much. talking about them. That's the problem though, yeah. is, that, is that I talk, I think myself in circles. Y yo, oh, you're a- In circles, in yes. circles, in circles. And I think that I would probably protect myself more if I thought a little bit less. Because I've thought through every possible scenario of every situation. I don't know if it's like you would protect yourself more. I think you would just, you would. I would protect myself more in the sense that I might make decisions that lead with what's best for me earlier. It, it sounds like you're putting a lot of emphasis on what is good or bad for you when I actually think you oftentimes are so concerned with the feelings of others, which is a good thing that you delay. That's what I'm saying. Delay, but it's less about protecting you. You're, you're so concerned with how it could be received. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And it's, it's delaying the whatever kind of potentially negative adverse reaction might come from the confrontation itself or the conversation or whatever it might be that I'm avoiding. I think you're waiting for something uh, outside your control and theirs to change the situation yes. in hopes yes. of that being enough to bring it back to where it once to was. It. Right. <laughs> and you just eventually, I think, get angry at yourself and and almost pile on more stress to yourself yes. Yes. to try and then get out of that situation when it's overdue and, and you then somehow find a way to blame yourself over a situation when like you probably should have just ripped this bandaid off six months earlier. A spiral. A spiral. Do I have any real regrets? Um, there's one tattoo artist that I wish I hadn't gone to, but other than that, I can't really think of anything. <laughs> <laughs>
I've got none. Next time. <laughs> What goals do I still have? Ooh, what goals you, do I still have? You never like to have this conversation. <laughs> I know. I felt so seen that when we had uh, Brooke and Connor on the podcast and Brooke also was yeah. shared the the feeling of how sometimes setting goals can Ugh, be really goals. stressful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I feel like my goals have become a lot less analytical and more- uh, Tangible? How do I do a better job of using the best hours of my day yeah. to get towards that right. direction mm -hmm. versus that specific- Milestone, right? That specific line item. Yeah. Um, uh, there's nothing. I'm here. You got two dogs. What else could you need? Genuinely, like I, I think my overall <laughs> goal is to just be. This is so fucking lame. It's so fucking lame. But and this is what I mean. It's like it stresses me out to have goals. But like overall, it's like my goal is like, am I happy? Can I, um, give you what I think is? <laughs> oh, here we go. No, no, no. Can I? Can I, <laughs> can I give you an observation? You may. Actually, maybe don't I want it. No, it's okay. Go ahead. I don't go care ahead, if you want it. I'm giving it to you. <laughs> you, this is the most, this is, I, I'm not kidding. This is the trait that I admire in you most. My lack of goal setting? <laughs> no. Your number one priority <laughs> in life yeah. is to keep the things that are important and make you happy mm -hmm. and make you feel comfortable mm -hmm. the same. It's not necessarily the same. It's, consistently positive. Sure. <laughs> Anyways, my goal is to be happy and that has been consistent throughout most of my life and I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, I, 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 I can't tell you how much I admire this quality of yours. Didn't come out sounding quite as positive. I feel like it sounds in your head. I wish that I could be but as- But I as, acknowledge and accept. I wish that I could feel as full as you do when you are feeling content mm -hmm. and whereas I'm constantly thinking about like, okay, could it be better? It's true, it's true. I feel like I help ground you being like, hey, you're not here right now and I need you to be here. Right, but like, and, and it reminds me of that. And I go, wow, she's right. Okay. I admire that about you. <sighs> Fucker. Fucker? <laughs> <laughs> what impact do I want to make? What impact do I want to I don't make? know if Lawrence ever asked this question. That's entirely untrue. Good, prove me wrong. I have spoken so much about genuinely struggling with uh, mental health. And like, I know oh, that's no. so fucking cliche. I know, No, shut it's up, not cliche. Shut up. Don't, shut bring, up. Why do you bring out this card on me? No, but it's true, it's true. Like that I'll go is, fuck myself, you're that right. That is one of my most impactful things that I've ever shared about myself is struggling with like debilitating emetophobia. And the messages that I get from people are are so impactful even, even like when when I'm in a good place they're impactful and when I'm in a bad place they're impactful like it is genuinely one of the most like connecting things that I've ever shared online with so many strangers who feel so seen and you know I'll probably never meet these people but like the conversations that I've had with people talking about anxiety and depression are like life altering yeah so I have thought about this and I do this what impact did you make? I want you to know just how wrong I am and how correct you are. I want to. I want to fucking clip that and make it my fucking ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> just I want to know. Uh, when I pride myself in making impacts that no one besides the person I make that impact for knows about. Uh, what? The people who didn't have a job that now have a job. Oh, I see, I see, I see. The I see, I see, people yeah, whose yeah, yeah. company were going to go out of business mm -hmm. and I found the money. Mm -hmm. Like the things that are not anywhere on my social media, the things I don't talk about, I don't share stories about it. The things that, unless you were in the room with the people that were connected, mm -hmm. you, would, you wouldn't know about, mm -hmm. that's what I enjoy. Yeah, I, I, I love that for you. Cause I think it's like, it's, it's quiet impact. Which yes. I think is is really nice. I'm a loud fucking person. I'm for abrasive. Sure. I'm annoying. For sure. When my opinion yes. is yes. even starting to form in my head, yes. everyone's heard about uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. And it's not like I want to balance it out with that, <laughs> but the ability to do the thing that I wish someone had been able to do for me mm -hmm. is the best fucking. It's like it. it, it it's not like some. Uh, uh, it's a good quality you have. But also it's not something incredible. Like I don't find myself- Some as people like, some people need others to know about their impact and their accomplishments that they've made for it to really matter to them. But I feel like that doesn't, that's not how you operate. It's which the is really nice. one fucking redeeming quality yeah, I and have. It's kind of not misaligned with some of your other qualities. <laughs> Do I want a family? Less right now. <laughs> I think a hermit one life could be- One more capybara. 
I'm thinking to myself, what kind of fucking compound could I buy in the middle of Texas with all the technology and a decent fiber connection and just prepare for the end of times? No, I want a family. And I think you'll be a I great- I you answered that question as yes, but you said no. No, I want a family and I think you'll be a great mom. I'm gonna be a great mom. Oh, the Halloween costumes that my kids will have. God damn, they will You're gonna slap. You're going to be so embarrassing. Like, I'm going to slap. <laughs> one more picture. One more picture. No, no, no. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Do you want a family? Yes. Are my friends really my friends? Yes. Can, I, we try, can we do that again and read it? Are my friends really my friends? I, I read it so fast and it resonated so deeply that I was like, yes. Are my friends really my friends? I think post-COVID, I, it's especially, I know we always say this, but I think that I genuinely have son, done such a good job of really valuing my time and who I surround myself with and ensuring that they, like, they're just, just, I know them and they know me and that's that's what's important. I, yeah. I, to me, I, I have less and less friends as the days go on. No, um. No, but it's true. It's yeah. true. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's one thing to have so many acquaintances or surround yourself with people who don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't like the term like serve you. You know what I mean? Cause that makes it sounds like so like weirdly one-sided, yeah. but it's like when, when someone can be a positive and true and earnest, honest person with you is See, just, I don't even need that. I don't even need that. I want them to be on the same page. Okay. I don't even, I, I don't need my friends to be positive. I don't. <laughs> I don't. No, I don't, I don't even mean positive. I mean, I mean positive. No, but I think you do, you do. I, I think I, no, 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 my friends are positive. <laughs> no, they're not, but like, I feel like you, you're very, it's very easy for you to absorb somebody else's mood Oh, for and sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. I'm a sponge. Right, and I'm, it's, it's a lot easier for me when someone's just being negative or like, or they're just going through negative time. Yeah. To be the one person who cracks a joke about the situation and they go, mm-hmm. that's the first time I laughed in a day. Like, and, and I enjoy that too. I, I don't soak up their negativity or sadness. It's not something that like, I like, oh, I'm like, no, I'm sad. So like, I don't need them to even be like, be positive. I just want them to be on the same page as me. I mean, I think, I think you can be negative, but it have a positive impact right. on you. Yeah, which, I'm being is, cynical. which is what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Am I a good friend? Yeah. I really pride myself on being a good friend. I'm someone who enjoys remembering the little things and text, oh, it's Mia's birthday in, in, in 53 minutes, 43 minutes. Ooh, that math was rough. 43 minutes. Uh, am I a good friend? I have continued to be the person who, if you, if you uh, how do I put this? If you want something and you could use some help, don't call me. If you need something, mm. you can call me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, I would much rather be known as the person who, if you need a mountain moved, He'll do it because you're the only person that can do it for him. Mm-hmm. But if you need some help moving, <laughs> don't call Jeremy. Don't fucking call he me. Will not text I'm you not back. going to. Yeah, I, I will, will text you back me. after I know for fucking sure You've the last moved. box is moved. <laughs> yeah. The last box has been cut up. Everything is put away. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. And I'm sorry. I wish I was, but no, I don't. I, I, there's something so rewarding. I think about being a good friend. I think there's something rewarding about being a great friend. That's what I mean. Like, yeah. I, it just like, like I love, I, I, I know how, how special I feel when someone goes out of their way to be a good friend to me. And I love being able to reciprocate that. It's, it's, it's honestly like contagious. I how think. many times have like someone you really trusted fucked you over? Mm. But I mean bad. Really bad? Yeah. I mean. Not that many times, to be honest. Yeah. I, I've done, like, looking back at my track record, minus a few, I've done a pretty good job of not having, like, any, any like, awful people in my life. Well. Or, or not letting an awful person get close, I guess. What's funny is, like, I have these, the, uh, the complete opposite reaction to that, which is that I've let great people mm-hmm. get close to me who've done awful things to me. Oh, yeah. See, none of my great people have done bad things. A couple have. Yeah, but and, I, and I, my life, yours, yours, my life. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, fuck. You had one crazy one. That'll be for another podcast on another time. Yeah, Jeremy had some crazy. But like when I hear stories like that, I'm like, oh shit, my friends are angels. God damn. Yeah. Anyway, next question: Is this the city I want to live in? Yes. Yes. We love our city. <laughs> when was the happiest time of my life? Oh, the when you wedding menu tasting. God damn vibes. Excellent. <laughs> when do we meet? December eighteenth, twenty twenty two. Was an expensive day. 
very expensive day. Yeah, that was that was probably it was tops. Yeah, I did enjoy it. It's a great day. Yeah, it's a great day. Am I a good daughter and son? <laughs> I'm a good daughter. I, I okay. We both we both yeah. beat teen pregnancy. And by God. When you look at the statistics against me, I'm actually sliding back into bad daughter now because I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not uh, Produ- producing offspring. Yeah, yeah. offspring. So it's like once you pass 16, 18, 19, 20, and it's like good daughter, good daughter, good daughter, now bad daughter, bad daughter, bad daughter. Once I'm, I'm sliding into 30s. I could be a better son. I heard something, um, or like I, I, I absorbed something from a podcast that really fucking stuck with me. And I think more people need to hear it. And it, I forget who it was. Are you going to follow up after I just said I, I could be a better son with something that's going to be yes. uh, jarring emotionally? You probably need to hear this as well too. Yeah, exactly. I don't think I, okay. Is that if you think about how many years your parents have left or your grandparents, your aunts, uncles, your loved ones based on their age, just like generally speaking, you know, and if you don't live in the same city, or even if you do, and you just don't make time and don't prioritize seeing your family. Why are you holding your hand out, pointing to me? I'm I'm not seeing your family. Seeing you replay. Seeing your family. Because <laughs> you talk like anyways, go ahead. But I I think that so basically someone did the math and he he lived in like South Africa or something and he was like my family lives in London wherever it might be and it was like if my parents are only going to live for this many more years and I only make the effort to go home once a week once a year that means that I'm only going to see my parents this many more days of their entire life that fucking rocked me to my core that didn't yeah, that I understood math that one didn't get get me really and I mean that's a sad thing to think about, but like that doesn't make you a good or bad son. No, it doesn't make you a good or bad son, but I'm just saying that I think that like thinking about that has made me prioritize ensuring that seeing my family will always be top priority. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Am I a good person? I'm I, a th- good, I think you're a good person. I'm a good person. Yeah. I'm a good person. Yeah. I am too sensitive and too riddled with the uh, the thoughts of others, I think to be a bad person. I've been a bad person for sure. Plenty. Oh God. Plenty, 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 plenty. But also, I he's, think he's a rehabbed bad person. No, just like I think, <laughs> I think I have the luxury mm-hmm. of uh, doing a better job of not being selfish now. Mm-hmm which doesn't mean I'm also not selfish still sometimes, but like, I think I have the the ability and the luxury to be able to prioritize uh, an existence that isn't so um, mm-hmm. me first. But also I think it's a lot easier to do that when you're not in a situation where you have to like put your oxygen mask on first. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. Do I care what other people think, Lauren? I think that I am a forever fluctuating ebb and flow of how much I care of people think. Couldn't have said it better myself. Lauren. Yeah, because I think that when when I think about it in comparison to like how much public commentary the average person goes through, I probably have the toughest nail thick skin in the world compared to some of those people. You know what I mean? Who haven't been told their X, Y, and Z 1000 times a day on every platform. But you know, sometimes I think it's I think it's nearly impossible to consecutively be human and also read a comment about yourself that might like feel a little too true in that exact moment that you happen to be reading it for it to not resonate a little bit and to not make you care what someone else thinks, even though you're never gonna meet this person. They live across the world in a totally different time zone on a different hemisphere. I'm, I'm trying to care more about what people think actually. <laughs> no, like, I think there's like a level of, uh, <laughs> What is it like to sleep at night? What is it like? No, I just like, I, I going back to being a bad person, but just like, I, I, although I'm, a, uh, not, I don't struggle with stating my opinion and, <laughs> and coming to a decision on what it is that I want to do, mm-hmm. but also like that. Yeah, com- maybe keep your opinion to yourself sometimes a little more. <laughs> right. But like, there's a level of, uh, you know, everybody has something to say whether it's positive or negative. It's just yeah. like, you know, whether or not I think people are correct in criticism of me or of people around me, it's their opinion and mm-hmm. it's their reality. And so totally. like, even just understanding how it could be perceived, like how could what I say or how, what I do be perceived incorrectly 
even if it's, you know, uh, only 10% off or really off, like, you know, being aware of that, I think is important. And that is, because, and that is, and that is, and that is on BetterHelp. BetterHelp.com slash WT9, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to give more fucks. <laughs> Should I feel guilty about cutting someone off? Let me answer this. No. Oh God, I, I'm riddled with guilt. Even if someone was fucking me over day after day after day after day, I still would feel guilty. This one, I, I, uh, I've never felt more strongly about. Oh no, no I, 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 I could get burned every single day for so many days in a row and still feel guilty. And I don't, I don't know what it is to fix that because I think that like, you know, through therapy, through relearning, whatever might be changing your perspective, I think that you can learn how to talk yourself out of that. But I still don't know if it's possible for me to ever just not immediately and have my natural reaction be guilt. Assigned seats, seating charts. When you grow up, when you walk into a room for the first fucking 18 years, shit, sometimes in college, they tell you where you're going to sit uh -huh. and you're going to sit next to that person and whether you like them or hate them or if they're rude or they're nice or whatever, you have to do it. Mm -hmm. And for that reason alone, I never want to go back to fucking school or a situation where I am forced to exist next to someone I can't just cut off because they suck. Oh, I was like, where are we going with this? Where are we circling back? When are we going to circle back no. to cutting off? Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, no, no, I'm here now. Like, I'm here now. There's I'm here so now. much of your existence. I was like, did I miss a question? No, so much of your existence. Out for you a are second. just forced to be in yes. and around people that do not make you the person you want to be. Yeah, yeah. And for that mm -hmm. reason alone, I enjoy being an adult. I enjoy going, you know what? You're done. Mm -hmm. I don't have to deal with you anymore. Moving on. Don't feel bad about it. Cut people off. Do not give them the best hours of your day. Amen. I wish I could think like that and we all should strive for that. <laughs> Although I want to care more about what people think, the people that I don't want to care about, I'm, I'm out. Are my friends the friends I want for life? Currently, I think the people that we have around us are people that I foresee being long-term and have been long-term. I think guys are almost sometimes at least better at this in the sense of like, they aren't thinking about whether or not they're going to be like, good or bad in like five years. They're just like, oh, it's good for now. Yeah. But like also without a boundary on that, mm. like I think all the people that I spend time with currently, I would continue to enjoy spending time with until they prove me otherwise. Okay. Male logic. Do people respect me? Um, I mean, I think that being, having a job on the internet where people can form opinions, there are probably lots of people that don't respect me for many, many reasons. Oh, uh, Lauren, people respect you. I, I would like to think I would like to think that people respect me. I think people feel that they are uh, safe to be as mean and negative towards you sometimes as they are mm -hmm. because they think that it's okay to criticize you because of the amount of like success and respect you have received. Whether it's whether they think it's merited or not, mm -hmm. I think they think that it's completely okay to treat you not like a human sometimes because it's like, oh, well, like, what does it matter what I say to them? Yeah. I mean, I think that's with anyone who puts themselves out on the internet like that. You know what I mean? It's like any artist who posts something is that people who are consuming the content or able to view it think that, you know, you automatically just don't become a person to well, some people. Plus, like, it, that, it doesn't, has nothing to do with the internet. It, like anybody who does anything well. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, you're so right. Whether it be athlete, musician, yeah. whatever it might be, you know, you're no, so right. A partner at the firm. Yeah. Uh, senior management, like anybody who's in a position, like a, a perceived position higher than somebody else, it's so easy for people underneath them in a, in a corporate ladder to go, I have so many things that I dislike about this person. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy for me to just point out all the things that they suck at. And it's like, there's a good chance that like, they are probably in your shoes or something similar at some point. Right, because they've been, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It has yeah. nothing to do with the internet. It's just, it's just the, the, the way the world exists. Do I treat my body with enough respect? Jeremy? Yeah, it's fine. Next. <laughs> Dr. Mike approved. <laughs> the, question, the question on TikTok of being like, should this 6'4 male with below average heart health be consuming this many stimulants? <laughs> Just wait till I go for my checkup in a couple months. I'm gonna go, all good. Oh my God, yeah, fuck right off. Do I treat my body with enough respect? I, I really try and put a lot of effort into my body and- Oh, Diggo just woke Diggy? up and found the crumble. That, those are not for you. Those are not for you. Come here. Come here. Come here. No. Oh, Diggo. Diggy, come no. Here. Come here. No. Come here. Come here. Oh, he's so torn between you and the crumble. Diggy, come here. <laughs> up, up. Yes, the answer is yes. Diggy. I choose my body with enough respect. You <laughs> come here, little fucker. Diggo. I almost wish that I disrespect, disrespected my body a little disrespect. more when I was when I was younger. I I think everybody should. Yeah. Uh ooh, go ahead. Yeah. Can oh, I? <laughs> oh, can I speak up for myself? Uh -huh. Oh, motherfuck. I'm, I'm getting better at it. You are. I'm getting better at it. You are. Uh, but I do not have a track record of 
doing well at this. And I think every time that I'm forced to do this, I get better at it. But speaking up for myself is, has, has been difficult. And I, and I don't know why. Yeah, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Maybe you could actually speak up a little bit less. That'd be quite nice. <laughs> oh God. Is it too late to change? Absolutely fucking not. Yeah, absolutely not. And except, just, for, except for if we're talking about <laughs> feeling guilty when you cut people off or any <laughs> other things that I feel like are just nature to me. <sighs> do I need anyone? Oh my God, I do. Yes. Yeah, I do. I used to uh, make it my existence to not. Yeah. But only because like, you know, that was just like trauma. That's a defense mechanism yeah. for sure. No, yeah. no, no one I feel like is born into a world and goes, I want to live next to people, but need no one unless there was a reason they feel that way. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Do I need more? Ooh. No, I'm, I'm wildly content with everything right now. And I also feel like the things that I am striving for are within reach. You know what I mean? Like nothing feels out of reach in the sense of like, I, I feel like I, I need something. I don't think I need more. I do have, there are, going back to the goals that we're setting, mm -hmm. there are things that I'd like to strive toward mm -hmm. that will lead to more. Sure. If I get there. More what? More. But like the whole, I want to achieve more things. More capybaras? Yeah, I want to achieve things that allow me to afford more capybaras. Yeah. I don't want to achieve things to do, to get more, if that makes sense. Right. right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm striving yeah. towards like the, the things that like- Do as more a to byproduct. do more. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. After the fuck not, am I ready to be an adult? Tuck me in, feed me a bedtime snack and give me my capybaras. And no, I am not ready to be an adult. I genuinely will never forget the day, which was in my <laughs> mid twenties when I realized that you just don't become an adult overnight and that people like when they become who they are, just don't change. Like, I know we just said, is it too late to change? And the answer is no, like you can change it anytime. But like people, when they, are who they are and continue for the most part to be that person for the rest of their life and it doesn't change and there's not an overnight switch where you become an adult. That shattered my reality of the world. I don't think anybody um, gets to answer this question. It happens. What do you mean? Like, no, I don't think anyone's like ready to be an adult. I think the day that they uh, are faced with being an adult is the day that they have to become and No, I don't even think there's a day when you're faced with that. I think that you just slowly are taking on more adulthood so Sometimes related. it happens quickly. Yeah, I mean, obviously if you lose your entire family and you're now caring for like yeah. dependents or whatever, obviously, but like. Yeah, I think it's like, am I ready to like do the things? Am I ready to not have layers of defense between me and the things that like being an adult sometimes requires? Sure. Have I challenged myself? <laughs> Diggy has something to share. <laughs> Your breath smells like a dumpster. Do you something to share? Um, have I challenged myself? I feel like uh, eh, I challenge myself. Yes, you have, Lauren. <laughs> oh my goodness. I could start lifting off so many things. Uh, I, okay, okay. I'm not coming to your idea. Thank you, show. I think... Oh God, I mean, we've done, I've, I've spoken so much about debilitating imposter syndrome. And so- You've been annoying. I'm just, uh, oh God, yes, yes, the answer, the answer, I guess is yes. I mean, like, you, could you challenge, challenge yourself more? Sure, but I'll be yeah. sure, but like, yes. Okay, yes. I've, de I've challenged the fuck out of myself too, yes. Yes, okay. And we'll continue to do so. But also yeah. I find joy in that. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Have I found love? It's right yeah. in front of me. And it's got four legs and 12 nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, what he knows that. Uh, do I have the life I wanted? Ooh. Uh, oh my God, this is so much more yeah. and different than the life that I wanted. Like in my wildest dreams. Yeah, truly. <laughs> would I have a 10th of what I have now? No. No, not even close, not no. even close. Are there any changes I wanna make to my lifestyle as I approach 30? Jeremy, Mr. 1,000 milligrams of caffeine a day. Any changes you'd like to make? Leads to my problems. Um, <laughs> yeah. Diggle literally just put his paw on the microphone and was like, fuck this He's shit, like, it's enough. time. Put me to bed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just want to be more mindful. Of? Period. Everything? Yeah. I love that for you. This is, that's, that, that is a, a direct result, I would say, that will impact me positively. <laughs>
Yeah, but like that's part of why I want to be mindful. Yeah, I love that. Um, do I want to make any changes in my lifestyle as I approach? I got a fucking list for you. <laughs> oh, you got <laughs> um, I would say actually this, this, I would say for most of 2023, I have been- 23? Aren't we in 2023? Oh, I, think tw- I was like, maybe you're 29. Oh, no, oh, I mean, that's that's way off. Come on now. I would say in most of 2023, I have done a decent job of wanting to make the changes that I set for myself for the year, not in terms of like, I, like, I feel like a New Year's resolution is like cheesy. You like, don't do goals. You don't do okay. New Year's, no, no, we know. We know you're not interested in, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not interested in setting targets for yourself. But I would say that I've made some positive changes in my lifestyle, like health wise that I've been wanting to make. And um, yeah, I feel like I've been executing. Agreed. Yeah. I think you have to. Yeah. Well, this is fun. Um, we have a wiggly diggly and I think I can't decide if he wants to be put to bed or has to pee. So we have to go. Lafia, it was good to hang out with you. Next um, episode is 150. Oh my God. Next episode is 150. We'll have some kind of fun, like, uh, wild till nine in review from 150. We launched the podcast on my birthday three years ago. Wow. I know as wild. Look at us. That is fucking crazy. One pup ago. I know one pop ago. We had no idea we had this much happiness in store. Twelve nipples (laughs) ago. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.